Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. I'm sure you clicked on this video because you're ready for more fan fiction and I'm going to give you what you want. As always, the story is linked in the description box down below and let's go ahead and get started. We are starting with chapter 15. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, you probably want to do that before watching this one. Otherwise, this one probably won't make much sense. Last we left off, Sam tried to make a move on Rachel still shocked. All right. Chapter 15. It was the next day after the incident and it's been awkward for you and him. You both threw glances at each other and tried to avoid. It's uncomfortable at the most and you just can't take the feeling of guilt. Rachel, look, Samantha pointed to the crab in the sand and smiled brightly. You forced a smile through your thoughts. It's kind of cute. You chuckled at her and took her arm to make her walk. We have to meet up with the other Samantha. They're all the way up there now. You complained. She looked up to see them. Oh, she said. She looked at you with a creepy smile. Let's run. Your eyes widen. What? No. But it was too late. She was pulling you this time. Samantha, you're a brat. You caught up with the others and she jumped on Sam's back. Rachel, are you okay? Colby asked and touched your shoulder. You looked at him. Nothing. It's just hot out here. He pressed his lips together and squinted his eyes into the sun. You chewed your inner lip and looked away from him and into the water. Aaron glanced over his shoulder and smirked at you in an evil way though. Your heart ached and you exhaled. Did you wear sunscreen? Colby asked and looked at your shoulders. Yeah, why? You asked. He cocked an eyebrow and investigated your body. You seem to be red. You tried to look at your shoulder and touched it and the other one. Ouch, you said in pain. You didn't realize that you were burning up. No wonder you were hot, Colby commented. But I did put some on, you declared. Obviously not. Let me take you back to the room. He grabbed your arms and headed to your room. You sat on the bed and looked at your sunburnt self. How did this happen? You asked as Colby went to get a cool cloth. Maybe you thought you did. You pressed your lips together and looked around the room. You got up and picked up the sunscreen you put on. See, this is it, Colby. I put this on. It says sunscreen. S-U-N. Well, I can't even spell. S-U-N-S-C-R-E-E-N. -E -E you spelled out. He came back. Well, I don't see why you'd burn, he said. Maybe you didn't put enough on. You glared at him. Colby, I know what I did. I put on plenty, you yelled. He placed the cool cloth on your shoulder. Calm down. I'm just trying to help. You exhaled. I know. He told you to keep the cloth on. Let me see the sunscreen, he said, and you gave it to him. He opened it and smelled it, furrowing his eyebrows and tilted his head. Uh, this does not smell like sunscreen. You looked at him in confusion. What? You questioned. He put the bottle to your nose and squeezed it a bit so you could smell. Huh. He closed it and set it down. Did someone switch it out on purpose? Because sunscreen doesn't turn into normal lotion in minutes, he said. Did you use a different one? You asked and softly rubbed the cloth on my skin. He put his fingers over his lips to think. Actually, yes, I did, he said and left the room to cut it. He came back. This one is purple. That one is yellow. They're both sunscreens. So someone did change them out. But who? Then a thought came to your mind. That little a-hole. He looked at you with a smile for a reason. He changed the bottle into lotion. Aaron did it. You growled and was about to storm out, but Colby grabbed you. You hissed at the pain he pressed into your burns. Shoot, Colby. You groaned in pain and pushed him off. Sorry, he apologized. I glared at him. What are you doing? You asked. I was wondering the same thing. What are you doing? You exhaled. I'm so sorry if you just heard that noise. I'm going out to confront that jackass, so please stay out of my way. He wet his lips and grabbed your wrist. And what problem will that solve? He asked. You yanked your wrist away. Me knowing it was him, you said and went to the door. You opened it, but he slammed it shut. Stop it, he said softly. You turned around and gave him the death glare. Get out of my way. Rachel, I said stop. So stop, he said in a low tone. Fine, when he gets back, I'm confronting him, you said and pushed him out of your way. Why are you angry at me, he yelled. I'm not, I'm just aggravated, you declared. Then listen, I'll deal with him and you take care of your sunburns, he said. You chewed your lip and slightly nodded. Come here. You smiled a bit and walked over to him. He hugged you. Ah, easy on the burns, you hissed and chuckled. Let's fix you up. After everyone got back to the hotel, Colby turned into a glaring hawk. Seriously, he glared at Aaron like no one's business. You sat beside Samantha on the couch. Why is this happening? Everything with Sam and Aaron, it's so crazy and you don't like it at all. Say, why is it so quiet in here? Samantha asked and put her hair up into a messy bun. You started to chew your upper lip and suspiciously looked around. Sam was quiet, watching the boring TV channel, and Aaron and Colby were having a staring contest. Maybe they're just being weird. Plus, it's been a long day, you said and changed the subject. So, have you guys ate or... Samantha smiled. 
No, I haven't. Why? Would you like to go get some or make some? She asked. We can go get some, but you're coming with me, you said. She nodded. Okay, then. You both stood up. Well, guys, we're going to order some food. We'll be back soon, she said. You took a small glance behind you before closing the door. I hope nothing goes wrong. You were both at a restaurant waiting for food you both ordered. So, really, Rachel, what's wrong? She asked. You looked at her with a weird face. She giggled. What do you mean? I don't know how people feel. All I was doing was expressing what they looked like. They didn't look normal. Okay, you said in a suspicious tone. I didn't ask about them, Rachel. I only asked about you. She confronted, your face sunk, feeling caught. Fine, you started. I think I'm mostly upset because I was burnt at the beach, ruining the day for Colby because he had to leave the beach to help me. She cocked an eyebrow. Okay? Which wasn't my fault because what I thought I put on my skin was sunscreen, but it wasn't. It was lotion, you added. She laughed at you. Oh my God, you're so weird, she said and hit your arm. You smiled. You both returned with the food and went to the room. Guys, food is, Samantha trailed off, seeing Aaron and Colby fighting. Your jaws dropped and your eyes widened. Holy Jesus, what was happening? You ran over and stopped Colby. Colby, stop, quit. You tried to push him off, but he didn't budge. Aaron was already knocked out, but he just kept punching him. Hell, he might have already been dead. Samantha panicked and didn't know what to do, so she kicked Colby in the head, knocking him out. Oh my God, what was just happening? She yelled and her eyes widened. You stared at the dramatic sight and then to her. Where's my Sammy? That's disgusting, she cried out. The door opened and Sam was there. Samantha went to him and hugged him. Sam looked around, then to you. What happened? He asked and held Samantha. I don't know. We came in with food and they were fighting. So Samantha kicked Colby in the head and then I don't know, you tried explaining. Well, what the hell do we do? Wait until they wake up? He asked and walked over to them and squatted down inspecting them. You shrugged and pressed your lips together. You were in too much shock to know what was happening or what to do. Let's just stick a blanket over them and eat, you suggested. Samantha came over and looked down. Sure, because I think I killed Colby, she said. You raised your eyebrows and stuck your hands in your pockets. There's nothing else we can do. They look peaceful, you said. Samantha looked at you crazily. Rachel, are you blind? She shook you. Well, they'll wake up soon. Just get some blankets. They need to learn to be mature. This is not my problem. Amen, sister, you said and walked away. You'd think you'd care for this happening, but to be honest, they didn't need a fight. Aaron had a couple cuts, but he'll be fine, and Colby was just kicked in the head. Yeah, just kicked in the head. No big deal. You all got some blankets and put them over them. Legit, just put some sheets on them and ate their food. It was quiet when we ate, so quiet we could hear each other chewing our food. Well, every day is so weird and complicated with these boys. Chapter 16 You were in the bathroom applying lotion to your burns. You still can't believe Aaron would do such a nasty thing. You know that you rejected him, but you liked Colby, and nothing was going to change that. You finished and put the lotion up. You stepped out of the bathroom and saw Colby, now awake, sitting on the couch. Aaron, I guess, was in his room. Colby tossed a glance at you. You shook your head at him. You shouldn't have done it. You walked over to him and sat down. He put his hands on his knees and sighed. He cleared his throat. Samantha sure can kick, he said. You also sighed. You wouldn't stop. Why were you beating him up so badly? You asked. You probably already know the answer. Well, he was making fun of you, and I could see it in his eyes. He was enjoying it. We argued, so Sam stepped out, and I tackled Aaron. He deserved it, Rachel. He put a hand on my thigh. I mean, look, you resemble a tomato now. You laughed and hit his arm. He chuckled. Colby, you started quietly. I guess I'll just have to learn to get over it. I'll be fine. Plus, I guess I deserve this sunburn. I haven't always been the best person either. He put on a confused expression. Rachel, you're amazing. Nobody's perfect, but you're just absolutely awesome. I never knew someone that could stay nice like you do and give people chances. I know that from experience. You blushed, which wasn't visible through your already red skin. Thank you for that, Colby. He looked into your eyes and just smiled. I want to ask you something, but I'm not sure if you can accept it. I mean, I hope you do say yes through all the time we've spent together. He nervously started and rubbed the back of his neck constantly. This isn't the most perfect time to ask, and it's obvious what I might ask, but I want your honest answer. Will you be my girl? He was cut off by Samantha and Sam. Guys, we'll be leaving by tomorrow morning. I just don't think this vacation can last like this, Sam said. Samantha nodded. Yeah, I know, you mumbled. You still wanted Colby to finish what he was going to ask you, but he just got up and went to his room. You sighed, looking at the spot where he left. Your mind felt overflowed with everything happening. 
you trying to understand Colby, trying to keep Aaron as a friend, and still feeling guilty over the incident with Sam. It's just all crazy and confusing. You stood up, walking past Samantha and Sam. They both watched you walk away. You went to Aaron's door and knocked. Hopefully, clearing things up can bring back the once friendship we had together. He opened it, revealing his bruised and swollen face. You cleared your throat. He went to shut the door, but you held it open. Please, Aaron, don't shut me out. I'm not here to act like a child. I'm here to get things straight, you sternly said. He stared at you for a while before opening his door. You walked in and he closed the door. You turned around to meet his swollen eyes. I'm sorry things had to be this way. He sighed and gulped. I don't really think he's good for you, Rachel. Honestly, he's good for nobody. He's a simple-minded pig who needs to be taught a lesson or two. He punched the inside of his palm like it was Colby's face. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Both of you are. You switched out my lotion. Who has the nobility to do that to an innocent girl? You confronted. He looked at your skin. I look like a piece of bacon. You held your arms out. I'm sorry about that one, but come on. It's a classic. He laughed. This isn't funny, and I've never in my life heard of switching out sunscreen with lotion. Now, please, can we work this out like adults here? You held your forehead as if you were stressed out. He nodded. Now, tell me why you hate us so much. He lightly grabbed your arm and moved you to the bed. He sat you both down. It's not that I hate you, Rachel. It's the fact of how much stupidity you put in for Colby. Do you really think he's looking for a steady relationship with a girl like you at a young age? He said. I mean, he did do nice things for me. He stayed with me on my birthday, you said. Yeah, while Samantha and Sam and I were decorating for your birthday. He was just there to distract you. The kiss wasn't a plan, he admitted. You looked at him. You can't change my feelings towards him with words, Aaron. I like Colby. There's just so much happening. I don't know where to begin with anything right now. Colby's not even my boyfriend. He's just, you trailed off. Just what? Aaron said. You glanced up at him. A boy I kiss. Then what do you want from me? He asked with a slight scoff. I want to be your friend again. I think you're really sweet, Aaron. I can't let go of that because of a relationship. I mean, you have fans that would die over you and you like me. There are way prettier girls and much nicer ones. Don't toss your fans for me, okay? You said with a reassuring smile, trying to lighten the mood a little bit. He bit his lower lip thinking about it. You really think so? He glanced at you. I know so. Now let's get you and Colby back as friends, you said and stood up, clapping your hands together. He smiled with his puffy lips and stood up with you. Let's go, he said. You both went out and Aaron stopped in front of Colby's door. Make it up to him. Good luck, you said. His eyes went wide. You gave him a thumbs up. Alone? The door opened. You dashed into your room. You hope this goes and ends well. You decided to sleep it off and see what tomorrow will bring. You woke up with the sun jumping into your crusty eyes. You saw Samantha beside you. You sat up and saw the time. Eight in the morning. You hear laughter from the kitchen. You slowly got up, being quiet to see all who was laughing. It sounded like Colby was laughing also. You sneakily opened the door since the kitchen was visible from your door and you could see everything. You looked around and saw Colby, Sam, and Aaron all laughing their butts off over something. This was something good. They were getting along just fine, it looked like. Colby was laughing and his eyes trailed to yours. He just smiled with his busted lip. He stood up and walked to you. You opened the door. He brought you in his arms. Good morning, Rachel, he said. Your heart pumped and so did your cheeks. He was being so fluffy. Morning. He let go of you and just kept a lingering smile. Aaron and I are all right now. I heard you threw in some magic, he said. You laughed a little bit. Magic? Anybody could have done that so easily. You just have to hope. I mean, did you really think this whole scenario was going to last that long? You said and leaned on the doorframe. He just followed you with his eyes. That's why I love you. You blushed, he cupped your face, and gave you a small sweet kiss. Your heart melted. He loved me? For real? Well, are you ready to head back home in about an hour? You looked at Samantha and nodded back to him. Yeah, we'll be ready, you said. He smiled and left. You felt your heart was palpitating so much. Those words felt so real and soothing. You didn't even care about the that's why. You just focused on the I love you part. You jumped on the bed and shook Samantha vigorously. Wake up, you yelled in excitement. She groaned and smacked your head lazily. You laughed. Five more minutes, she groaned out. We're going home in an hour. Let's go, you said. She shot up. An hour? I haven't done my makeup. No shower. She jumped up and quickly waddled to the bathroom. You sighed and looked at your phone. You decided to get dressed. You guys are on the road now, Colby and Aaron sitting by one another. You beside them. It was peaceful again. Nice and quiet. You were glad you could figure out a simple solution to all of this. Colby looked at you and smiled. 
Tell Aaron to slow down on the hot sauce, he said. He playfully looked at Aaron. How much hot sauce do you eat anyway? You asked before you could scold. He laughed. Not much, he said. Colby scoffed. Try almost 10 bottles a month. My kind of guy. Your eyes widened. Aaron, you do need to slow down. You're going to give yourself a dang heart attack, you scolded with a surprised smile. He shrugged, looking back out the window. Guys, we're here. I'll take you and Rachel home, he told Samantha the last part. You looked out and saw Sam and Colby's house. Sammy. Samantha whined and clung to Sam's arm. I want to spend a night with you. He smirked, getting her hint. Oh, God. You acted to heave and got out of the car. Samantha noticed you were overhearing and laughed. Oh, come on, Rachel. I'm old enough, she playfully argued. You pretended to heave again and held your mouth. Aaron and Colby exited the car. Colby looked at you. I guess you're going home now, he said and rubbed the back of his neck. You nodded. Yep, I am. He wrapped his arms around you with a shy smile and picked you up. You squealed. Colby, put me down, you commanded. He laughed and properly hugged you. See you, he said and secretly kissed your forehead as he turned around. He went into his home. Aaron looked at you. You gave him a quick hug. I'll see you around, you said and broke the hug. He went in along with Samantha. He went to the passenger side where Sam was waiting to take you home. You got in and buckled up. Are you ready? He asked. You nodded. Halfway into driving, he said something that perked your ears. Colby wanted me to tell you something. What is it? You asked curiously and eyed him. He wanted you to meet him at the park with a nice dress on, he said. You felt your heart shake. A dress? I don't wear dresses. I feel like I'm waddling in them, not walking. Okay, you said unsurely and looked back out of the window. He pulled up to the house and you got out. See you soon, he said. You smiled and closed the door. You opened it back up. My things, you mentioned, almost forgetting. You collected them and tried to wave by. You went in and set your things down. A dress? Was this some kind of date? You received a text on your phone. You looked at it. Colby, wear a sexy dress with a face. Chapter 17. A sexy dress? What is going on in that boy's head? I mean, first off, you hate dresses. Second, a sexy one? Ugh, no way. You. Colby, no, I'm not wearing anything revealing. Colby, but Rachel, I never see your skin. You, my skin is a tomato now. Colby, it's really not that bad. Your face is fine. It's not too noticeable. You, don't press my buttons. I'm not going out until it's all gone. Colby, fine, I'll come over. You, Colby, stop. I'm going to hit you in the head. Colby, lol. I can't take you seriously, Rachel. You, well, start. Colby, I'm coming over. You sighed and flopped onto the couch. Why does he have to come over now? You wanted a bit of space to yourself. You wanted to slip into some comfortable sweats and eat ramen while you watched your favorite Netflix series. But now you can't since he's coming over. You got up and put on sweats anyways because it's not like Colby would care. He wears sweats too. You brushed your hair a bit to look okay for Colby. You heard a knock making your ears perk up. You heard a knock making your ears perk a little bit. You put your brush down and headed for the door, knowing it was Colby waiting for you. You opened it and saw him with a red rose and a button up where the sleeves were partially rolled up his forearms and dark jeans. What is this, Colby? You opened the door all the way so he could come in and he smiled. Wow, no hello, he asked and skimmed over the house. You couldn't stop staring at the rose in his hand. Was that for you? Hmm he said, and noticed what you were looking at. He brought it to your face, a warm smile on his lips. This is for you, Rachel. He pushed it into your hands and stared at it. For me? You stammered out in shock. You've never had a rose given to you. He eyed you. I'm sad you didn't want to wear a dress for me. I think your skin isn't so bad. It could be a little less tomato-y, he teased. You glared and hit his arm. He laughed. But I think you're just beautiful. You felt your cheeks turn red and you looked away with a bashful smile, acting like you were inspecting the rose in different lighting. You felt his hand on your side and you froze. Why aren't you talking? His breath hit your ears, sending you shivers. Thank you for the rose, you said and turned around into his chest. You took a step back. He looked so good that you were scared to talk to him. Not scared, but nervous. I really appreciate it, you added. He nodded. Yes, you're welcome. I picked it up on my way. I thought you might like it. I only picked up one because this one stood out differently. It was the brightest and most beautiful, he said with a smile. You blushed. It reminded me of you. You felt your heart race and face heat some more. Oh, well, that's nice. Did you go for the brightest red because of my skin? You said and moved past him before he heard your heart beating like crazy. He laughed a bit. 
I'll find a vase to put this in. You went to the kitchen and left him in the living room. Why was he being so flirtatious and soft? It made you really weak. This rose was pretty. You found a small vase and filled it with water and stuck the rose in. You centered it in the middle of your counter. Colby came in and his hands were in his pockets. Rachel, he said, catching your attention. You traveled your eyes into his. I want you to know that I really like you. He came closer, making your posture rise. You eyed him nervously. I know back at the hotel, I never got to ask you this important question I'm about to ask. He chuckled nervously and looked at the ground and back to you. This non-dating thing is really confusing, and I think if we do date, it'll be easier to claim to everyone that you're mine and only mine, he said, a slight smile on his lips. What was he saying? Your heart was dysfunctional and beating so quick. There's never a bad time to ask, I don't think, but I really want you to be my girlfriend. You smirked a bit. That wasn't a question you mentioned, and your playful smirk turned into a smile. He sighed. Rachel, will you be my girlfriend? His eyes looked into yours. They were nervous. You glanced at the rose on the table and back to him. Yes, you smiled. His eyes lit up and he was surprised a bit. Really? He asked, his voice in disbelief. You nodded. I mean, why not? You came over for an answer and you got one. Plus, I thought you'd never ask, you said. He pulled you into a warm hug. Oh, thank you. Now I get to tell all my fans who I belong to and they can't say anything, he said and broke the hug, happiness showing on the outside as he jumped on his tiptoes a bit, making you giggle. Of course, it won't be easy considering there are some out there that aren't true and don't like my decisions, but otherwise I know they'll love your cute face. He poked your face happily and exclaimed, wow, he was really happy. You were too. He pulled out his phone and put on the camera. He held you to his side. You panicked and wriggled from him. No, 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 no pictures with this face of mine, you said, and he frowned. Okay, okay, let's go somewhere to eat, he said and grabbed your hand. You slowed him down and looked at the ground. Colby, you said he looked right at you. Hang on. Let's wait for a better time to eat. Right now, I'm just tired. He clicked his tongue. Oh, yes, you are tired. So we shall sleep. He said. You nodded and smiled. Then it hit you. His words. We shall sleep. We? He picked you up and you squealed and hugged his neck. Colby Brock, you said sternly. He smiled. Where's your bedroom? I will make sure you rest so tomorrow we can go eat, he said. You cringed at all of this. Same. And rolled your eyes. Gosh, boyfriend Colby is so cheeky. You ended up laughing a little. Down the hall and it's the first door, you said. He brought you there and laid you on the bed. He covered you up. Colby, you said and stopped him. He looked at you. What? He said, his voice in worry. I can do this myself. Please, just let me. You said, he hesitantly backed away. I know you want to, but these are things I can do myself. If you want, you can lay down beside me and we can talk until I go to sleep. He nodded and made his way to the other side. He didn't lay down, but he rested his back on the headboard and looked at you. So can I let Sam and Samantha know? He said, you looked at him. If you want to, you said and smiled. You scooted over to him and hugged his waist. You felt his muscles tense and he relaxed after a bit. Talk to me first. He rested his arm and sighed. Okay, so you know Aaron? You nodded. Well, when we got up this morning, he fixed me pancakes. Can you believe that? You smiled and closed your eyes. So anyway, I ate it and he spiked it with hot sauce. His voice trailed off as you were falling asleep. Wow, now he was your freaking boyfriend. Now how will things go from now on? His fans, his friends, you? What will happen? You don't know but you were so happy to be with him. Right. And that's where we're ending the reading today. I feel like this one was kind of boring. Is Rachel going to tell Colby that Sam made a move on her? Because she better. Or Sam's going to tell Colby. And that's probably going to upset Colby more than it would coming from Rachel. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Let me know if there's any other fan fictions you want me to read. I got a request, I can't remember the name of it, but I got a request for another Colby Brock fan fiction. So that one's on my list. So leave a comment down below letting me know if there's any other ones you guys want to hear. I am going to be trying my absolute hardest to upload every Tuesday. And then if I have any bonus videos, I will post them probably Thursday. I feel like Thursday sounds good. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It lets me know to keep making these videos and I will see you in the next one.